This is Late Night Health. This is the radio show that cares about the most important part of your life, your health. During the next hour, we're going to spend some time with the insane Daryl Wayne as we look at spirituality, really. Uh, Helping other people, making the world a better place. And we're going to start with our first guest. Uh, Her name is Kim Canton. Um, She's got a new book. It's called Where Yellow Flowers Bloom, a true story of hope through unimaginable loss. Uh, I live in Thousand Oaks, and about five years ago, with the rains that we have been having off and on, there were just terrible damage up in the Santa Barbara area, about 50 miles from where I live, even closer for Daryl. And there were mudslides, and Kim is going to talk to us about the mudslide that took the life of her husband and her teenage son. Kim, welcome to Late Night Health. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been five years. Mm -hmm. Is life getting back to normal? Has it Mm -hmm. gotten back to normal? It's never going to get back to normal, right? But um, it's moving forward. It's moving forward, and... You know, I'm I'm physically more healed, which is great. You know, I had to learn how to walk again and, um, you know, have a house to live in again <laughs> and <laughs> contents in a house, a couch. I have a couch again. Um, and, you know, l- grief, I think, gets lighter over time. Um, it'll never go away. You learn to adapt to it or integrate your life around it. So, um I'm just kind of taking every day as it comes and and uh, just trying to be fully present in the moment. We should say that at 3.30 in the morning, uh, a huge mudslide mm-hmm. slid into your house and destroyed it. Yeah. As well as losing two of your family members. Mm-hmm. Your daughter was saved. You were saved. Do you ever ask why? Um, I I don't know if I ask why as much as marvel at how did Lauren and I survive the unimaginable with car-sized boulders that we were swimming with, and as as um, four hundred homes were damaged, sixty three were destroyed, and all their windows and their glass was we were swimming with their glass from their shard windows and um, granite and bricks and electrical wires. It's it's more, how did we survive? And then saying, well, we survived, I think, for a reason, right? There's no reason we should have survived what we did when you see the car-sized boulders on my property. Um, and so I kind of look at it that way. You know, I was really kind of juxtaposed between, you know, this, uh, really profound grief for losing my son and my husband and dog and juxtaposed against this huge gratefulness for our lives, Lauren and Mai's life being spared. Do all go- dogs go to heaven? Oh, I bet they do. Their dogs are pretty terrific, right? Yeah. Um, you're still in, you, uh, you, you still feel their presence, your husband and your son? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, I think I, I I do. You know, I was out on a walk the other day, and I just kind of thought to myself, "Dave, come walking with me." You know, and um, so I did that, and and I see birds and stuff looking in my little window, and there's two little birds that sit on this um, um, electrical wire in the distance, but they sit and look in my master bedroom, and I just feel it's kind of Dave and Jack just checking in with me. When uh, you, I mean, you had an idyllic life, you know you. Mm-hmm. You know, you Boy Scouts, and and you worked with your daughter and her activities, and mm-hmm. um, active in the Santa Barbara community. You taught Sunday school. Mm-hmm. Has your perception, your your thoughts on religion, have they changed? Have have you become more spiritual, more religious? Yeah, I would say that no, I. Look, I, I came to the table with um, a, a good, strong faith in Christianity, right? And I was always open. Like, I'm not dogmatic. You have to be just one thing or just one other thing. I'm not. It's just I'm Christian. And uh, so I came with a faith, but I was pretty open-minded. I was open-minded. I 
whatever if someone believes in a higher power whatever that is good for them gives them hope right believing in a higher right. power gives you hope um and um but i've definitely become more spiritual through this whole tragedy and trauma because i've been witness to so many amazing things that tell me we're more than our physical bodies and that there's been signs and synchronicities and divine timing that make me know we're more than our physical bodies and so i'm i yeah i would say i'm more i'm maybe even more relaxed right about um you know formalized religion yeah right? i think it's just if people yeah, i i just i just hope people have get a sense of a higher power however that works for them and and work toward good that's all you you mentioned synchronicities tell us about some of those oh just <clears throat> just of synchronicities of things that happen you know during the search we went and looked for my son who was one of the two missing after the mudslide 23 people died two of which um, were deemed missing. One was my 17 year old son and one was a beautiful two year old baby girl, Lydia. Um, we'd be out in the search for three years with my sacred search team and, and things would happen in such a way we got drawn back to the same area over and over and over again. There were, um, it was just kind of, uh, we get, we'd get drawn back to it. Um, and so that was a big synchronicity. Um, I think, you know, I had the sister at my church, Sister Kathleen, who's fabulous. She would say to me during the looking for the search for my son, she'd say, all in God's time and God's time is the right time. And I was really mad at her for saying that because I wanted him now, right? I wanted him recovered now. And I was like, that's a bunch of hooey. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but you know what? She was so right. It was divine timing. It was the, it, by the time we found some of Jack's remains and we didn't find all of them, I was in a better frame of mind to accept what we found versus then, you know, laying down in the fetal position and not being able to move. If I had found out what I knew to be found of him, what we found three years later, if I found that out, say in the hospital right after the tragedy, I don't think I could have, I don't think I could have bared that. The, um, you know, I started by asking, is life back to normal? Is is life, how's Lauren? How's your daughter doing? She's the strongest girl I know. I can tell you that much for sure. Um, you know, she's had some struggles with, you know, the trauma surfacing and the shock wearing off. And, and you know, she's buried alive for six hours under 20 feet of mud um, with a tiny pocket of air, size of a volleyball in front of her face. But, um, She's working through it. We're really dedicated and we've really invested our efforts on healing. If it's for me, you know, grief counseling, if it's for me and her trauma, EMDR is this tapping thing that they use for PTSD um, to help our nervous system recalibrate um, or somatic um, therapy, which is for that. So yeah, she's, she's, she's pretty remarkable. She's a college student now and and uh, acing it and, you know, but- She's gonna major in psychology? That. Here, bingo. I wanted her to sing, but she's finding psychology fascinating because of everything she's dealing with. You wanted her to sing? Yeah, she's a singer and um, she, she finds healing. And I, I really sense she feels her feet on the ground when she's singing and so, but she doesn't think that's a pragmatic career. And I said, follow your passion. Yeah. Absolutely. Our guest is Kim Canson. She's written a book called Where Yellow Flowers Bloom. It's a true story of hope through unimaginable loss. And the purpose of the book is to help you get through your unimaginable loss. This is Late Night Health. I'm Mark Allen. We're going to take some time out. When we come back, we'll continue with Kim as uh, Late Night Health moves forward. We turn it back to the insane Daryl Wayne. Late Night Health is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. 
Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids. And she can give you your life back too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing. And with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthear.com. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging parents or just have fun find out about the advertising opportunities with late night health call us at 805-391-0308 that's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at late night health.com that's info at late night health.com join late night health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care call now at 805-391-0308 that's 805-391-0308 Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Words are a critical aspect of success. How you get your point across is a crucial part of what makes anything sell. So do it right and hire a writer. Whether it's articles, blog posts, technical writings, website content, product descriptions, or ghost writing anything from a novel to a nonfiction book about your navel, contact Servette Hassan. If you want it to sell, write it right. Email Servette at Servette at ServetteHassan.com. It's time to tackle a tough topic, one that affects us all. We're talking about sexism in the workplace. The award-winning Identifying the Elephant in the Room series is back and ready to tackle some complicated communications issues again. This spring, we're focusing on critical communication strategies in the face of sexism. Join us as we hear from professionals in the natural products industry who have valuable career lessons to share and real-world experience to discuss from all sides of the elephant. It's time to have an honest and open conversation about the impact of sexism in the workplace and how we can make it better for everyone. Identifying the Elephant in the Room series starts March 16th. Register today at inicibox.vfairs.com. That's I-N-I-C-I-B-O-X dot V F A I R S dot com and join the conversation to be part of the solution. Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. We're talking about unimaginable loss with Kim Canton. Uh, her house was destroyed by a thirty, a thirty foot Kim wall 30 foot of wave. Mm-hmm. And wave. Mm-hmm. Was this? A, would you call this an act of God? I mean, the insurance companies would call this an act of God. I don't know what I'd call it. It's nothing that I'd recommend for anyone, but. Um... Um, I mean, I think there was a lot of factors that, uh, converged on a, on a night, right? The Thomas fire, the mountainside had no foliage to hold the, the mountain in place and to hold the boulders in place. Then you get, uh, it was half an inch in five minutes of torrential rain, half an inch in five minutes on a mountain that had no foliage to hold the stuff in place. Then I think seven water mains burst open on the hillside unleashing millions of gallons to add to that torrential rain. Then there was a gas leak fire that, that um, turned the dark night into an eerie nuclear bomb yellow throughout Montecito. So it was just a series of unfortunate events that um, I don't think God did that. I think they were all uniquely 
different things caused them and they all unfortunately happened at the same time. You, you when we were in our break, you, uh, you said, you know, people can understand, you know, dying in a car accident, you can, uh, cancer, a heart attack, mm -hmm. right? But something yep. like a 30 foot wave of mud. I could have never in my wildest dreams, when you think about what's going to get you, would I have said a mudslide. I would never, I would, wouldn't have been on my lexicon. Drowning maybe, you know, heart attack, stroke, whatever, cancer, you know, maybe, you know, a drive-by shooter, you know, but <laughs> never, never a mudslide. And that's what did it. So it was unimaginable. Would you say this has prepared you for those other catastrophes of life, the cancer, the car accidents, or can you never be prepared? I think I'm very clear uh, we're not owed tomorrow and that just um, stay in the present and enjoy the present because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow to to myself or others. Um, uh, so I'm more I really try to just stay in the moment and appreciate what I have in the moment um, because life can change very unexpectedly. And, and, you know, I think for all of us, mine happened to be a mudslide, but other people have a lot of other tragedies. If it's a divorce or if it's a, a terrible car accident or losing a job that's pivotal, you know, for their family stability, everyone has their own stuff, you know? How has life changed for you? Well, I lost a lot of my identity, right? I was a wife and now I'm a widow. So I'm not a wife anymore. I'm not a couple anymore. Um, I was a career woman and I retired after this. So I don't have my career woman stuff. And and, and what about your stuff stuff? Oh, it's gone, gone. <laughs> it's in the ocean. <laughs> in the Goshen. I mean, family photos and... You know, I, that was the, the, the hardest thing to lose were the family photos and the children's artwork um, and those special gifts that maybe you got from your spouse or from people, like the special things. Um, but a lot of people sent me the pictures they had and I had a few things in the cloud. So I had some pictures there, but I lost so many pictures, so many photo albums that were on shelves, you know, from my college years or my you know younger years and you know when Dave and I first started dating those were just gone and it's just it's sad you know it, that that's the saddest part what happens for Kim now what's your yeah I, I we've talked uh, on the show a lot about mental health and about life purpose has your purpose life purpose changed yeah thanks for asking that yes um there's I think the book by Frankel, which is what Man's Search for Meaning or something like that. And he talks about, it's a pretty famous book, and he talks about if you have something bad happen, the best thing you can do is put purpose around it, right? It gives it meaning. And so for me, I didn't realize it at the time, but the book has helped me do that um, because I'm hearing from others who read the book. And I just got a text from a friend today who lent the book to one of her girlfriends who then just suddenly lost her son to some weird thing in Alaska with mud. And she said the book has been really helpful for her. Um, there's a missing boy in San Luis Obispo. He washed away five years to the date when my son washed away in, in a um, roaring river and they haven't found his little body. He's five years old. And his, his dad called me um, and I sent him the book. Um, so I think, I think my purpose is my story if it can help other people in, in their tragedy or their trauma and their grief to, to have maybe some of the, the things that I've learned or I've witnessed, I think that puts some purpose to it. So, yeah, I mean, nothing that five before five years ago I was considering because I didn't have the context to consider it. We, we all go through grief. Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, maybe losing a grandparent or a mm -hmm. great grandparent, a friend. Is there are there degrees of grief? I mean, you've got this huge thirty foot wave of mud. Uh, that's one kind of that that brought grief to you and your family. 
Mm-hmm. What about other family tragedies, events? Are, are they all on the same level? Hmm. That one, see, the, the, the one I had was so shocking, right? It was sudden, it was unexpected, and it was devastating because I lost everything. Two family members, a daughter buried alive, my physical well-being, I had to learn to walk again. I was in the hospital for three weeks, and, you know, a couple surgeries. And um, so there was a, and, and when you have sudden unexpected death, there's a lot of, um, they say you get really, um, focused, you don't like anything with uncertainty because right. What happened to me was all of a sudden not, So uncertainty is difficult. Sometimes I want to plan things out a little bit more, be a little bit more vigilant that way. So are there degrees of grief? Um, I'm sure there are, it matters where you are in it, right? For me, I had so much coming at me at the same time. I was shell shocked. So my, for example, my grief for my husband was delayed because I had to focus on stabilizing for my daughter, getting out of the hospital, um, making sure she felt safe, looking for my missing son, whose body was decaying every day that went on. And so poor Dave, my husband, he had to take the back seat. Like I went to widow's group and I did stuff for Dave, of course, but compared to someone who, and I don't want to say just, so say a woman loses her husband to cancer, car accident. And that's, she still has her house. She still has the rest of her family, all that stuff. She can maybe, and this sounds goofy, have the luxury to just focus on that, that terrible loss, right? And what that means for her. And I didn't have that because I had so much going on at the same time. I had to kind of compartmentalize things. And um, so my griefs, you know, I'm, I'm getting you know, through it now more, but it's been five years. It's delayed. I mean, a lot of people can get through their grief maybe in one year till it feels lighter. And, um, I, I was five full, I was on the five year plan. You know, like the people who go to college extra years, I was on the five year plan. Got it. Uh, our guest is Kim Canson. She is the author of where yellow flowers bloom, a true story of hope through unimaginable loss. Uh, in our remaining couple of minutes, and Daryl, show me how many minutes we have, because I, I lost track. Zero. <laughs> Got it. All right. So we're, we are out of time. Listen, the book is available at Amazon, Where Yellow Flowers Bloom. And um, uh, if, if you're going through anything, any, any kind of grief, this is something that will snap you out of it. I, I, I promise. Kim, thank you very much for your time today. Thank we you. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Take care now. Thank you. Bye. Uh, bye-bye. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. Don't go away. More coming up. <laughs>